Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. It is that time of the week again to see what is happening all over the secondary market, and there's a lot to talk about. First off, believe it or not, Streets of New Capenna is already moving a few card prices in the market. You're going to see that throughout the video today. Also, we have the Banned and Restricted List update not too long ago, especially that Luris of the Dream Den banning in Modern has had an impact. You're going to see some of that. But again, the key driver this week is the fact that players are building a lot of new commander decks around these Kamigawa Neon Dynasty cards. But keep your eyes open, there's going to be some other surprises too. Quickly, before we get into all the details, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Streets of New Capenna products there, and they have a whole lot of other things on their website too. Remember, if your order's over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. And also, whenever you use that Heroes promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin with the standard legal spotlight. And we do have a $2 threshold again this week. We're not going to talk about any cards in this video unless they're moving at least $2 up or down. When it comes to standard, of course, these are the standard legal cards moving the most this week. And you will notice that most of those are Innistrad Double Feature cards because some of them are still trying to find their price point. So let's see what's happening here. First, we have Hollowed Haunting from Double Feature. It's down 940 this week to 2120. Now, this did spike recently. The card was very popular. Now it is starting to normalize, trying to find its price point. It still sees a lot of play, though. In standard, it's Anaya, Selesnia, Bant, and Four Color Enchantments. Seeing some legacy play in Enchantress decks, too. And in Commander, this is a card that you see many times in Sithis Harvest hand decks. Those builds are more popular now because of the enchantment focus in Neon Dynasty. I've also seen this in a lot of builds around new cards from that set. Go Shintai of Life's Origin, Light Paws Emperor's Voice, Satsuki the Living Lore, and Norika Yamazaki the Poet. First card going up in this section is Chandra Dressed to Kill from Double Feature. It's up 217 to 1499. So this is seeing standard play in Mono Red Aggro, Pioneer, you also see it in Mono Red Aggro builds there. Modern, it's in Obash Aggro, and it does get a little commander play too in Chandra Fire of Kaladesh builds and more. Vorinclex Monstrous Raider up 220 to 3233. Okay, so first off, this does see a little standard play in Saltai Ramp. Pioneer, you might see this in Mono Green Stompy. This is also a fairly popular commander card and a good upgrade to the Upgrades Unleashed commander deck. Additionally, I've seen this in fresh builds around a card from there, Chishiro the Shattered Blade. Also, it's in new commander builds around other Neon Dynasty cards, Kodama of the West Tree, and Ray Han Last of the Abzan slash Yoshimaru Ever Faithful builds. But the reason I think this is moving as much as it is this week ties into a card preview coming from Streets of New Capenna. We haven't seen much from the new set yet, but we have seen this card here, Broker's Ascendancy. This indicates that this particular crime family may be focused on counters. And remember, not only will they be a part of the regular set, but each of these crime families will also get a commander deck too. Vorinclex Monstrous Raider may be getting better pretty soon. Next is Wedding Announcement, another card from Double Feature. It goes up $242 this week to $5. It is a popular standard card in Orzhov Midrange, Naya Enchantments, and much more. This is also seeing increased commander play in some Ishin to Heaven Says One builds. And finally for this section, we have the Meat Hook Massacre. Again, the copy from Double Feature. It is up $787 this week to $6778. Now, currently, I would say the price on the screen is a little bit inflated. I do think you could find this card cheaper. It went down last week. This week it does bounce back up, but I think mainly it's just because there's not a lot of copies for sale right now online. When some more copies enter the marketplace, this should stabilize back down. It does see a lot of standard play, though. It's in Orzhov Midrange, Orzhov Control, and much more. Pioneer, it's in Jun Sacrifice, and it has seen increased commander play in Tetsunari Toad Rider and Go Shintai of Life's Origin. That takes us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight, although most of the cards moving here are moving more because of Commander. First, we do have Shivan Dragon from Revised that is down 278 to 2364. This copy has been a little turbulent recently. It does go down some this week, as you can see. Gets a little commander play. And another card going down, Grim Tutor from Starter 1999. It goes down 291 this week to 89.99. This was recently reprinted again in the Mischief Secret Layer. Ever since that happened, this card has been relatively soft. It is found, though, in many Yuriko the Tiger Shadow Commander builds. Of course, those are popular right now because of the ninja support in Neon Dynasty. 
You'll also see this in a couple other new commander builds around cards from that set, Satoru Umezawa and Ishin. Cyclonic Rift, the first card going up in this section, Commander 2014's copy is up $234 to $36. The Modern Masters 2017 copy goes up $273 to $3604. Huge Commander card here, and another one found in Eureka. This is also a good upgrade for the Buckle Up Commander deck, plus I've seen it in fresh builds around a card from there, Shorikai Genesis Engine. Beyond that, it's in some other new Commander builds too. Satoru, Goshentai of Life's Origin, Hinata Dawn Crowned, Tamishi Reality Architect, and Tatsunari. The Great Henge is up 278 this week to 5289. This is in Pioneer Mono Green Stompy. Another good upgrade to the Upgrades Unleashed deck, and in fresh builds around Chishiro as well. I have seen this in Commander Kodama of the West Tree decks too, but again, I think the reason this is moving ties into Broker's Ascendancy. This is another card that could be gaining momentum because of that reveal. And the last card in this section is one that we have seen a lot of recently. It is a Rally of the War Leader. It has seen increased commander play in those Ishin builds. Gate Crash up 322 to 3149. And the Guilds of Ravnica Boros Guild Kit copy, which only comes in foil. That one is up 545 to 4288. And that quickly takes us to the Modern Legal Spotlight. Again, we have some cards going down in value, then some cards going up in value. First is Wheel of Sun and Moon from Shadow Moor. It is down 206 to $20.89. This was added to the list with Crimson Vow. It has remained there now going into Neon Dynasty. And that was the first time this card was ever reprinted. But it is seeing a little more commander play now in some Satsuki builds. Cavern of Souls from Ultimate Masters is down 210 to 8199. Now when a card joins the list, typically if it's only on there for one set, maybe two sets, it doesn't make a huge impact when it comes to card prices in the secondary market. But when a card is on the list for multiple sets, eventually it does have an impact. This was added to the list with Keldheim, and it stayed on all the way through in a Strat Crimson Vow. However, Cavern of Souls, as you know, does get a ton of play. In Modern, it's in Amulet Titan, Elementals, and much more. Legacy, it's in Doomsday, Mono Green, Cloud Post, and more there. Vintage, you'll find it in Goblins. Plus, it is a huge Commander card. You'll see this in Edgar Markov and many other builds. Sensei Golden Tail, this is down after a little bit of a bump last week. It is the copy from the list. It goes down 293 to 725. It did join the list during Zendikar Rising, stayed on through Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It has seen more commander play recently in Ishin, Ryu Storm's Edge, and Light Paws decks. Ren and Six, the copy from the list, goes down 226 to 10421. That was there for Zendikar Rising and Keldheim. Modern Horizons copy down 332 to 10587. So back when Wizards announced Double Masters 2022, they did show the art for this card, so there is a reprint in coming. However, still a highly played card. You're going to see this in Modern 4-Color Blink, 4-Color Omnith, and much more. It is banned in Legacy, but does get some vintage play in Teamer Control and other decks there too. Additionally, this gets a little Commander play in Lord Windgrace and more there. And the last card going down in value today, Unwinding Clock. The Commander 2018 copy down 536 to 2999. The copy from the list goes down 1414 to 3495. Now that did join with Crimson Vow stayed on going into Kamigawa Nian Dynasty. And you might remember a couple weeks ago, there was a lot of market manipulation around that list copy, so much so that I stopped talking about it for a while. It is normalizing down, still maybe a little bit inflated, perhaps. Now, if you're looking for egregious market manipulation, check out the new Phyrexia foil of this card. That's where all that attention went this week, apparently. With that being said, what does that card do? Well, it is another good upgrade to buckle up. Plus, I've seen some players putting this in fresh builds around a couple cards from there. Shorikai and Kotori Pilot Prodigy. I've also seen this in Jin Gitaxius Progress Tyrant builds. Let's look at some modern cards going up now. The Lilian of the Vale from Innistrad up $350 to $74.99. The Ultimate Masters copy up $4 to $79.30. So this card was completely pushed out of modern Jund and Rakdos midrange because of Luris. Now that Luris is gone, this is making a big comeback. Aside from modern Jund and Rakdos midrange, this is also an 8 rack there. It does get some commander play too. You'll see this in like Turgrid God of Fright slash Turgrid's Lantern builds, for example. Shizo Death Storehouse from Champions of Kamigawa goes up 436 this week to $45. Well, with the Luris banning in Modern, this most likely will see less play there, but it is still a solid commander card. It's in a number of Yuriko builds. Also, it's in some other builds around new cards from Neon Dynasty, Setoru, Nashi Moon Sage's Scion, Ishin, and again, those partner decks between Rayhan and Yoshimaru. Next is Avacyn Angel of Hope. The Avacyn Restored copy up 208 to 4719. The Iconic Masters copy up 442 to 4627. Okay, 
So this is a solid commander, and it's in the 99 of a lot of different builds, including Sithis, but it appears that Angels will be playing a role in Streets of New Capenna. So some are speculating that this card could get better in the future. Plus, it did get a quick Command Zone podcast mention this week, which could have brought a little attention to it, too. Urza, Lord High Artificer from Modern Horizons, is up 667 this week to 6410. This is getting a little more modern play in the post Luris environment. It's an Affinity and Thopter combo there. Legacy, you'll see this in Urza Echo. Vintage, it's an 8 cast. And it is a popular commander, plus in the 99 of a lot of builds, too. It is another good upgrade to buckle up. Also, it's been in fresh builds around Shori Kai and Kotori. And it's another one that I've seen in those Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant decks, too, there. Blood Moon from the Dark. I made a big point last week saying this is finally going back down. Well, here we are again. It's going up 828 to 10868. Now, obviously, the appeal here is the fact that it is the original copy. It's hard to find in good condition online. If you just want a copy of Blood Moon, there's a lot of cheaper ones out there. As a matter of fact, this was added to the list with Crimson Vow. Still there for Neon Dynasty. And it's also in the Mischief Secret Layer that just came out. However, it does get a lot of play. In Modern, it's in Murktide Regent, Crashing Footfalls, and much more. Legacy, it's in Jeskai Control, Blood Moon Aggro, and more there too. And it gets Commander play in a number of decks, including Krenko Mob Boss. And finally, for this section, we have Ranger Captain of Eos from Modern Horizons, up 1157 to 3599. And it is another card seeing more play in Modern now that Loris is gone. Currently, you'll find this in Slesnia Life Gain, Boros Midrange, and Mardu Midrange in that environment. Also, it is seeing some increased commander play in Hinata, as well as Rogue Rock, Son of Roga, Yoshimaru Partner Builds. And that takes us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. Remember, in this section of the video, the prices you see on the screen are going to be a little more reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website. And that's because, at least for most of these cards, they don't see a lot of sales over the course of a given week. So we do have to lean a little bit harder on asking price at times. Also, for the more iconic older cards, typically the prices you see are going to be somewhere in the middle between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies. Remember that. And if I do notice a price on the screen that's not really lining up close enough with recent sales, I'll point that out. But first, we have a card that is a little more common. It is Emrakul of the Eons Torn, the copy from the list that was there for Zendikar Rising, as well as Kel Time. It goes up 225 to 5225. This is banned in Commander, so we can't blame that format for this increase. It is modern legal, but it wasn't one of the big modern movers, so I decided to throw it in this section instead. In modern, it's in Glimpse Combo, Indomitable Creativity, sometimes Azorius Control, and more. Legacy, though, you see this in Sneak and Show, Mono Green Cloud Post, and more there, too. This particular forest that you see on the screen is back again. It's up 233 to 586. This is from Battle Royale, and it is a reprint of a Portal 3 Kingdoms forest, so yeah, I can see the appeal. It is a hard-to-find forest that is a reprint of a hard-to-find forest. This happens every once in a while. Somebody will decide they want to pick up a particular basic land for a deck or maybe a few decks. They go online, they grab a number of copies that are reasonably priced, and then they leave the ones that are higher priced out there. And that creates some artificial inflation, at least for a period of time, until more copies enter the marketplace. Typically, when this happens, it happens to white border lands because they do stand out when you fetch, and a lot of players do like that. Another card banned in Commander, this is Talarian Academy. It goes up 366 to 143.75. Now this does see Vintage play in Four Color Tinker, Aggro Shops, and more. Ancient Tomb, the Ultimate Masters copy up 384 to 6511. The Tempest copy up 451 to 6797. This was added to the list with Midnight Hunt, still there now going into Neon Dynasty. It is a big legacy card though. It's in Painter, 8 Cast, and more there. Vintage, you'll find this in Aggro Shops, Goblins, and more in that format, too. Plus, it is a huge Commander Mana Base card. It's expensive, but a nice upgrade to buckle up, or something to put in a fresh build around Shori Kai. Additionally, I've seen this in some other new builds coming out in Neon Dynasty, Hinata, Satoru, Ishin, and Light Paws. Mana Crypt on the move again. The Mystery Booster copy up 240 to 178.81. Eternal Masters up 297 to 188.53. And Double Masters goes up 490 this week to 179.99. In Vintage, you'll see this in Four Color Tinker, Aggro Shops, and more. It gets a lot of play in that format. But it's also a big Commander card as well. It appears in many Yuri Codex. And it is a good upgrade to the new Heads I Win, Tales You Lose Secret Layer Commander deck as well. Not to mention another expensive but good card to put into Buckle Up. Or just add to a fresh build around Shorikai. And again, there's a lot of new Commanders coming out of Neon Dynasty that have this in their builds. 
said Toru, Hinata, Ishin, and Light Paws again. Mox Opal also on the move. Modern Masters 2015 up 463 to 6466. Double Masters up 503 to 6594. And Scars of Meriden goes up 634 to 6681. In Legacy, this is an 8-cast painter and more. Vintage, it's in Paradoxical Outcome. Aggro Shops, 8-cast. Seize Commander Play 2, another expensive but good upgrade for Buckle Up. Also in Fresh Builds around Shorikai. Plus, you guessed it, it's in some other new Commander decks too, like Hinata, Tamishi, and Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant, as well as another one of those partner builds, Arden Intrepid Archaeologist and Yoshimaru. Argothian Enchantress, there's a saga of $390-5143, the Eternal Masters copy of $711-52. Now this is in Legacy Enchantress, but also this is getting a lot of Commander play currently. You'll see this in Sithis and a lot of other new builds coming out of cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, Goshintai of Life's Origin, Tatsunari, Satsuki. Plus, it's another good upgrade to Upgrades Unleashed, and good and fresh builds around some cards from there. Shishiro, Kaima the Fractured Kam, and Kosai Pentatent Warlord. Yogmoth Demon from Antiquities. This is up $11 this week to $39.99. So it is a demon. Maybe this is someone's Streets of New Capenna spec pickup. Or maybe it just dried up naturally online this week. It is worth noting that Mark Rosewater did say that Streets of New Capenna does not really have a strong demon tribal synergy in it. But of course we know demons do run the crime families. Recall from Legends of $12.50 this week to $138.99. Bad Moon from Unlimited of 1541 to 10432. Livonia Salone of 1551 this week to 10397. Argivian Archaeologist of 2167 to 22495. Underground Sea from Revised goes up 3419 to 94969. Copy Artifact from Unlimited of 4392 to 30710. Now, granted, this would be good in some of those newer commander builds we were talking about. If the revised copy was going up, I might think it was more tied into that. But when it comes to the unlimited copy, these tend to have a life of their own because they're just such big collectibles in general. Vesuvian Doppelganger from Unlimited of 4904 to 490.19. Fungusaur from Unlimited, in theory, going up 58.28 this week to 119.17. In reality, this price is pretty inflated. There are some copies with higher asking prices out there, so whenever cheaper copies get thin online, you see the price of this card jump back up. In reality, you can find it much cheaper. Abu Jafar from Arabian Nights of 6370 to 9884. Is this for real? Well, high grade raw copies can get higher than this, believe it or not. I have seen one sell recently for about $125. I have not seen many high grade graded copies sell in the last couple months, but there was a 10 that sold for about $570 not too long ago. Those are very rare, though. False orders from Unlimited. Now, this is jumping 6719 to 6969. I thought at first maybe this was a buyout. And perhaps it still is. But when you look at sales prices, this is not really that far off. The price does fall between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies of the card. Sunglasses of Urza from Unlimited goes up $67.62 to $139.99. Is that for real? Well, I have seen high-grade raw sell for about $50. I haven't seen any high-grade graded copies sell for a while. But when one does, I guess it could hit around this price point. And finally for this section, we have Black Lotus from Unlimited. It is up $3,600 and a cent to $26,500. The second time I was about to buy a Black Lotus, and it jumped just one cent too much for me. I guess I'll never have one. Oh, well. So let's talk about this card. When it comes to Power 9, very few of those cards sell any given week. So the price jumps and dips that you see are really typically tied into asking price more than anything. And that can vary based on the grades and also whether the cards out there are graded or raw. So it is difficult to really nail down a true price point for a lot of these cards. And that takes us to the Commander Spotlight. Now, all the cards in this section are moving, at least in part because of Commander. In a few cases, there could be other strong key drivers. I'll let you know what those are when we go through. First, we have Rite of Flame. This is the copy from the list that was there only for count time. It's up $206 to $8. And this does get some Commander play in a variety of builds. In Legacy, though, it is in the Epic Storm decks. Sphinx Ambassador. This is up 207 to 1229, and this is getting additional commander play now in Satoru builds. Consecrated Sphinx from Iconic Masters up 209 to 4691. Again, seeing more commander play in Satoru, and to a lesser degree in Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant. Kalia of the Vast. The commander anthology copy, that one only comes in foil. It's up 211 to 2646. 
the commander copy up 213 to 2757. So this is a popular commander, and with Streets of New Capenna having demons and perhaps angels as well, it is poised to become even more popular. Obviously, it looks like some are already speculating on this card. Cloudstone Curio from Ravnica City of Guilds up 218 to 5998. Solid commander card and combo enabler in the format. And you do see this in Sithis decks sometimes, but also it's showing up in some commander builds around a couple new cards from Kamigawa and Dynasty, Tetsunari, and Light Paws. Vampiric Tutor from Visions up 226 to 6964. This was added to the list with Crimson Vow still there going into Neon Dynasty. Popular Commander Tutor found in Yuriko, as well as a couple of builds around cards from Neon Dynasty. It's in Ishin, Satoru, and in Vintage just gets playing Four Color Tinker, Doomsday, and more. Intuition from Tempest up 228 to 18. This is getting more Commander play now in Hinata, Tamishi, the Reality Chip, and it is an expensive but good upgrade again to the Buckle Up Commander deck or something to put in a fresh build around Shorikai. In Legacy, this is in Sneak and Show and Omnitel. Goblin Settler is up 231 to 5341. Now, this doesn't see really much commander play to speak of, but it is yet to be reprinted and hard to find online in good condition. Mira in the Morning Well from Saviors of Kamigawa. This goes up 237 this week to 2355. Now, there was an article on Star City Games this week looking at cards to play in commander builds with Yoshimaru, and this was one of the legendary lands mentioned. You do see this in some other commander decks too, and maybe it could even play well with Broker's Ascendancy, which we saw earlier. Sword of Feast and Famine from Mirrodin Besieged. It's up 237 to 69, 78, and you guessed it. Solid commander card, getting more play now in some new builds. Ishin, as well as Arden slash Yoshimaru partner decks. Plus, it is a good upgrade to both Buckle Up and Upgrades Unleashed, and I have seen this in fresh builds around Shorikai and Shishiro. In modern, this he's playing Boros Midrange. Doubling Season, the one from Battle Bond, goes up 246 this week to $80.74. Huge commander card and another good upgrade to Upgrades Unleashed. Also, I've seen this in fresh builds around Shishiro, but it is another card that is heating up because of Streets of New Capenna. Maybe this is another card people will want to pick up once they get their hands on Broker's Ascendancy. Force of Will, the Alliance's copy is up 246 to 115. This is in many different commander builds, including Yuriko. It's also in new builds too, like Satoru, Hinata, the Reality Chip. And again, we have an expensive but good upgrade to buckle up. And it's in fresh builds around Shorikai, as you can imagine. And of course, outside of Commander, you know this is a huge legacy and vintage staple, found in multiple builds in both those formats. Replenish up 251 to 12420. Great card for enchantment heavy Commander builds like Sithis. This is also showing up in some other new Commander decks around Neon Dynasty cards, Goshintai of Life's Origin, Light Paws, and Setsuki. Yavamaya Halo, this is up 257 to 9557. This is getting a little more commander play in Tana the Bloodsower slash Yoshimaru and Rayhan slash Yoshimaru. I have also seen some use this as an upgrade to Upgrades Unleashed or placed in fresh builds around Kosai. This is the Strixhaven Mystical Archive copy of Teferi's Protection. It is up 262 this week to 3975. Highly played commander card. And again, we're seeing this in some new builds. Good upgrade to buckle up. And it's in fresh builds around Shorikai. It's also in Ishin, Goshintai of Life's Origin, Light Paws, Hinata. And I've seen this in Sisei Weatherlight Captain Shrine builds. Of course, those are popular right now because of the new shrines in Neon Dynasty. Great Whale, up 268 to 2692. This can be a combo enabler and commander. It is seeing a little more play now, though, in Satoru builds. Power Matrix, up 279 to 1059. Older card that's yet to be reprinted. Now, Jake and Joel are Magic on YouTube did feature this card in a short video this week, and they mentioned it might be good in Ishin Commander decks. Perhaps it's another card you might want to play with Broker's Ascendancy in the future, too. Chalice of the Void from Mirrodin. Now, this went down a little bit last week, bounces back quickly this week. It's up 281 to 6458, and this does get a little Commander play in various builds. However, this is a much more popular card in Modern Legacy Vintage. In modern, even though Luris is no longer there, this is still seeing a lot of play in a lot of different decks. And, of course, it still sees a fair amount of legacy and vintage play, too, in a lot of different decks in those formats. Miss Blade Shinobi, the one from Plain Chase Anthology, goes up 290 this week to 499. This is solid in Commander Yuriko, and it is also in Satoru builds now. Opal Eye, Kanda's Yojimbo, up 294 to 1204. This is seeing increased Commander play in Ryu and Ishin. 
Thrumming Stone, the one from the list, and that was there for Zendikar Rising and Kel Time. It goes up 318 this week to 5470. Now this is in Commander Maronar, along with Rat Colony or Relentless Rats. And those builds have been a little more popular because of the rat support in Neon Dynasty. Volrath Stronghold up 329 to 11969, getting more commander play in Ishin. Felidar Umbra, this is the one from Plane Chase 2012. It's up 336 this week to 775, and this one's getting more commander play in Light Paws builds. Flooded Strand from Onslaught the Original, it's up 341 to $90.92, and this is moving back up after some recent losses. It is a fetch land, so you know it's going to see a lot of play in many, many decks. It's in a ton of commander builds, old and new. Plus, you'll find this all over the place in Modern Legacy and Vintage. Seeds of Innocence up 358 to 3248. Now, this does get a tad bit of commander play, but I do think Legacy is moving this more than anything. It has seen some Legacy sideboard play in different builds recently to deal with there's a saga. Ancestral Knowledge up 363 to 1159. A number of cheaper reserveless cards have been hot recently. At times, they have been the target of a buyout, but at other times, they've simply been drying up slowly because I think some players are concerned that the card could be bought out in the future. They're trying to get in ahead of that spike. When enough people do that, the card will start to go up naturally. Now, this one in particular, though, does get a little commander play. I have seen it on occasion in Yuriko builds. Serenity Now, the one from Weatherlight, it's up 369 to $14. So this does get a tad bit of commander play, but again, I think Legacy is moving this one. I have seen this in Legacy Reanimator sideboards, again, to deal with Urza Saga. Death Coil Worm from Portal Second Age, up $3.70 to $18.99. This does not see much commander play, but it is hard to find online in good condition. And you might remember this card used to be more expensive before it finally got a reprint in the list. It was added with Crimson Vow, still there, going into Neon Dynasty. Deadly Rollick, up $3.74 to $34.77. Great commander card in a lot of builds, including Yuriko again. Also, new builds around some of these Neon Dynasty cards like Satoru, Ishin, and Tetsunari. Sylvan Tutor from Portal, up 376 this week to 8494. This is in some Sithis builds in Commander, also in other decks too there. You knew we couldn't get through a video without a copy of this card. And guys, Servant of Oni, the one from Betrayers of Kamigawa, goes up 377 this week to 4295. Now, this has been added to the list recently with Neon Dynasty that is worth noting, but it is in a number of Commander decks like Yuriko and Maronar. Plus, you guessed it, it's in some commander decks around some new cards too. Satoru, Nashi, and Grease Fang Okiba Boss. Not too much of an increase here considering this is the last card in the commander section this week. It is Dark Sphere going up 389 to 915. Now, this is another older card that's yet to see a reprinting, and it has seen a little bump in commander play showing up in builds around the reality chip at times, but this was mentioned in a Commander's Quarters video last week. The video was about a 96 lands deck that allowed you to discard enough cards to finish the table with Sickening Dreams. However, you remain safe because you could activate Dark Sphere. All right, that takes us to the premium spotlight. Now I say this every week, there's tons of cards spiking and dropping in value in the premium market all the time. Can't cover it all, so I try to pick a couple cards that feel relevant. I don't necessarily want to look for buyouts in this section or cards that are just drying up temporarily. I'm looking for cards where their growth feels a little more organic. I chose two cards again this week, and remember, much like the vintage section, these cards don't sell a lot, so we do have to lean a little bit harder on asking price. Again, though, if the price on the screen is not matching up with recent sales, I'll tell you. First, we have Power Matrix. This is the Mercadium Mass Foil. It's up $12.39 this week to $123.86. Is that for real? Well, I have seen high-grade raw copies sell between $65 and $70. I've not seen any high-grade graded copies sell for a while, but if one did, it seems like it could get around this price point. Yevamaya Hollow. How could I resist putting this on twice in one video? This is the Urza's Destiny Foil. It's up $17 to $899.99. Is that real? Well, when I looked at true sales, yeah, this is in between high-grade raw and high-grade graded prices for the foils. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. If you're still with me to the end, hey, thanks for being here. I always appreciate that. Until next time, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.